there were so many poems to pick from here, but you know, given the time constraints. Okay, so the first poem I'm reading is Positivity. Waking to find red spots on my chest and arms and rushing to the bathroom to get into better light to see if the spots are raised bumps or wet crusting sores only to find they are flea bites. Getting sick is not fun anymore. It used to be lying in bed reading good books while listening to the radio and pampering myself with fruits and juices and really good confectionery. Now, every red spot and every swollen gland worries me. I start feeling my glands all day, thinking they are becoming bigger every time I touch them. And looking for lesions, skip the vaccination scar and the post-operative scar. Maybe they are just insect bites. Getting sick these days prompts well-meaning friends to call and ask me how I'm doing, when was the last time, and just what did I do? The next poem is very lovely, uh, very, you know, different in tone, and it's, you know, quite tender. It's called The Only Living Man in the World and is dedicated to David for David. In a world where every act must be named and where every act has no consequences, I can take my, arm, my man in my arms and smooch him under the stars in the fog on top of a hill overlooking the night lights of the city in which I love him and call it a flowered cactus. He can tie me up and spit on me in the act of lovemaking, and I will call it a yellow pearl. We can devour all you can eat, rib dinners all weekend, and call it the drone of velvet. We can delight in our isolation. We can dodge the pinch of guilt or shame or fear or boredom. We can be lovers who return to a world to find friends long gone, our homes burned to the ground, our pets eaten, our families emigrated to unpronounceable lands. We can burn into each other's psyche like a brand on the butt of a prize steer. We can get pissed drunk, stay high up all night and get stinky in each other's arms and I will call it the reckless hiss of our life together. I tell you that if you should leave me, my heart will turn to deep sleep. And somewhere, I shall dream of acts that I cannot name, but in the darkness of my heart, and I shall invent a language that sneaks your familiar, your cherished body into the tawny terrain of my blood. I will talk to barbed wire, and it will talk back. Uh, the, the next one is uh, These Nervous Days. Uh, it's rather long, longer than the previous two poems, uh, but it's, I think, one of his signature pieces and forms the, you know, the back matter. So. You know, it will be criminal not <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Did I say it correctly? Yes. Uh, yeah, but of course the pun. Of course, uh, but you know. These nervous days. I want to kiss you. I want to just kiss you and hold you. I want to kiss you and hold you and hug you and love you and kill you. I want to pick my habit. I want to open a border and close a bag. I want to open a mine and close a heart. I want to open a shopping center and close a stadium. I want to have my own talk show. Yeah, I want a low-fat, low-cholesterol, guilt-free snack because I got a yummy-yummy in my tummy tummy. 
I want a new gas mask. I want to be other white meat. I want to deal a meal. I want better weapons than you. I want to kill more people than you. I want to fuck more people than you. I want to fuck more, more people than you. I want better nipples. I want to say, even if I have nothing to say, I want a new age ritualistic karma fuck me up. I want to kick your head. I want to make you love me like you love your dog. <laughs> I want to meet Tracy Lord and ask her why. I want to meet Jeff Stryker and tell him to stop it. <laughs> I want to be above fat. I want to discriminate against more people than you. I want to spread my my brand of hate field ideology with more venom than you. I want to spread more love than your mama. I want to know who's on first and why the fuck is he on first and not me, damn it. <laughs> I want to lick your butt, spread your ass cheeks and lick the dry sheet out of your sweaty butthole. <laughs> I want to swallow. I want to be the last victim of cynicism, crucified on the cross of... Fuck you! <laughs> I want to be the first to tell you. <coughs> and in these nervous days, I want to give you Give me your money, give me your spare change, give me five, give me a break, give me a better gift, give me a minute, give me a lifetime, give me a mantra. Give me your American history. Give me my American history. Give me, give me, give me a man after midnight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Won't somebody help me change the shadows away? Give me your firstborn. Give me a hand. <laughs> give me just a little more time. Give me God in a teacup. Give me God in the toilet duck. Give me your underpaid, underemployed job. Give me all these ages show. Give me a stiff drink. Give me a good beer. Give me hope. Give me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage of oh, fuck that shit. Give me shelter. Give me another chance. This never happened before. I was just tired. Give me another chance. I'm sorry, I won't ever do that again. Give me some cheap sentiment. Give me some sweet pain. Give me some chicken tonight. Give me your tired, your weary, your hard messes yearning to breathe free. Give me your cum, your spit, your piss. Give me your infected blood. Give me your diseased genitals. Give me your STDs. Give me your best makeup tips. Give me your secrets to clear skin, beauty, success, and weight loss. <laughs> Give me more power, Scotty. Give me some sense of empowerment. Give me some sense of security. Give me your best shot. Give me your stinking crown. Give me more. Give me. Give me what I ask for, and you can take what you want from me. <laughs> Last two poems, they tend to get longer as the book progresses. <laughs> but I promise it's worth it, you know. Nobody complains when you are having fun. Whether it's dirty or not, right? So smooch, you know, to, to, you know, you, you're also reading, I think, you want to call me? I'm asking something. Okay. I don't know, right? Is that a ring? Is that a ring? No. Is that a one? Okay. Okay, yeah. Say it to the end of it. Yeah, yeah. So to give the context to what he was saying, I thought we should read, hear the whole poem. Smooch. Growing up in a Muslim country where the TV programs imported from the evil West, was scrupulously snipped by the census eager Caesars to protect the Google-eyed masses from the prophet of lust. The kiss. Presumably watching too many unmarried kisses or too passionate unmarried kiss on that flickering light box would somehow inflame one's loins to all sorts of sinful deeds and unwanted pregnancies and moral decay. Only last week, I realized that I watched a full year of the love boat without ever watching anyone kiss. <laughs> anyone. The two lovers would approach, eyes closed, 
color print romance style, legs puckered black background music, full throttle, and a bad disjointed edit later, the two will be seen pulling away with that satisfied look of PG-13 fulfillment. <laughs> In retrospect, the only kiss that I wanted to have seen was the Vic Vicky Stubbing's first kiss. And, okay, so Vicky loves Dad Rambo, but he's in love with Michelle Lee. Vicky loves Parker Stevenson, but he's in love with Pamela Sue Martin. Vicky loves James Ferentino, but he's in love with Cheryl for the third time this month. <laughs> After the third commercial, Vicky will witness the object of affection pull away from the said being bet with puckered lips. Then good Captain Stubbing, led on by a team by by Gopher will find her weeping in a mascara drip in a deck chair and there will be the requisite moonlight Vicky when you get old enough you will meet a very special man who will be so lucky speech eventually Vicky managed to get a kiss Willie really Ames one that wasn't brotherly or fraternal but heck that wasn't spared by the senses either no kiss was spared not Joni and Chachi, not Knight Rider, not Dick Benedict in the 18th, not the entire Defects of Life, not J.R. Ewing, not Mr. and Mrs. Heart to Heart. For a while, I always wondered what it would be like to be a passenger on the love boat. How exciting to be filled with all sorts of wacky adventures and romantic twists and to finally get that forbidden kiss. But by then, I was already kissing old men in restrooms of shopping malls. Old men who were grateful for any decent grope they could get their hands on while their wives and children ran amok shopping, oblivious. <laughs> they would sit on the toilet bowl, put me on their laps, and rub up against me in a mixture of forbidden pleasure and fear that the security guards might burst in at any moment. And I sat there in stall after stall, trying to reconcile the smell, the smell of old man's gums and the love boat philosophy of life, pocketing whatever small gifts of cash they gave me in exchange for that one brief encounter of young cum. <laughs> Eventually, we got caught. One unfortunate old man who had the displeasure of moaning too loudly got us busted. But I managed to pretend that he forced me into the store. And as the security guards let me go with his watch and his $40 still in my pocket, I saw in that old man's eye a look that has stayed with me from toilet stalls to back rooms, adult bookstores, and bathhouses. The love boat philosophy has served me well. In the space of that bad edit, seen only by a religious zealot with Caesars and by your imagination, that apparent kiss can mean anything. It can lead to anything. And it can mean nothing but a means to fill the space. The love boat got cancelled. <laughs> Half the cast were on drugs. <laughs> and were continually broke up throughout the last few seasons. One ran for Congress. One became a housewife. One started his own business. One got totally washed up. And I figured out how to smooch boys the right way. Thank you.